April here, um, also known as Monkey Mantaka Online. I make uh, art videos and illustrations as well as studio vlogs while I'm trying to get my Etsy shop off the ground. And I thought today might be nice to do a little art studio tour or art desk tour because my art studio is actually in my bedroom. So I do have a desk and some drawers and materials, sketchbooks, all that stuff that you guys know and love. And I thought I would do a little tour of it, but first I need to do a spring clean because it is a state. So just a little pre-tour right now. Uh, this is my bed over here, you can see it. And then I basically kind of stole a corner of the room for my art desk. So I've got my art there, some materials, my art desk, and as you can see, it's very messy right now. I've been doing a lot of stuff over the last few weeks, and if I go into these drawers, you honestly can't find anything. Nothing, it's a state. And I have like random boxes on the floor that I've been saving. I don't know, it's just stuff everywhere. My sketchbooks are a mess. So, first things first, let's tidy up. So it's the next day now and I spent all night tidying, it took quite a while, but it looks a lot cleaner. So let's have a look, I thought we could start outside and work our way in. So this is the general desk area and I'm lucky enough to have this lovely bay window which does get quite a lot of light until the evening because then the shadows come over. I have my little cactus uh, creations that I made using Casey Golden's tutorial. I've got my mini masterpieces there that I really need to get back to. That was a fun little series. I've got a couple of little wobble heads, whatever they're called. And then my mum got me this. The name's Monkey. Um, I don't actually like eggs, but I like that because it's got a monkey on it. And I'm a monkey. So moving on to the second windowsill, we've got all of my cactus plants and succulents. I've got this little tray in the middle here that collects sharpeners and rubbers and stuff. My little clay heads for my pencil sharpeners. And then here I've got my little llama and a trolley and a uh, ball filled up with washi tape. And then we've got the most boring windowsill here, so I've got baby Boris, a fish bowl of washi tapes and some other random stuff there. All perfume bowls and stuff, that's just kind of like a junk, it's just a junk windowsill over there. Got my art desk there and my material trolley. So let's have a closer look. So for my filming setup, I used the very popular Canon PowerShot G7X Mark II, which I got for my birthday a couple of years ago. Still don't know how to use it, but I just try my best. And then it goes on this camera arm normally, which you can move very easily. Not very easily one-handed, but I can go into a lot of different kind of combinations. So you can do overhead, side to side, up your nostril, wherever you like really. And then this is one of my main sources of light for the winter. You can uh, push it down if you want to get closer to your sketchbook or push it up or move it to the side or just have it completely out the way if you're not using it. And it has three different settings, uh, so it's quite good, apart from this last one here. It flashes, so I can't use that anymore. And then also for my filming setup, sometimes I use this here. So I just set this up on the tripod, it's not very uh, good to use though because I don't have any room to put it anywhere. So sometimes I kind of like to put it here and just hope it doesn't fall over. <laughs> Don't fall. Hey! And this here is made by Rileno. Rileno. And it's a very, very good little lamp. And basically you just turn it on. A bit hard to see in the daytime, but it has different settings. So this is the brightness, so it can go all the way up to being super bright. And then also it has a uh, temperature, so you can go from being quite warm to being quite cool. I'm not really sure how well that's showing up, but you can kind of see it's changing the colour there a little bit. And another little tripod -y thing I have is this clamp here, which I believe is for a phone, and I think originally it's for putting next to your bed, so you can like watch uh, telly on your phone at night time without holding it, but it is quite good as a secondary camera. You just clamp it on a table or a chair or something 
and then clamp your phone in and you can film yourself or you can even use it for reference if you need to while you're drawing. So let's start with the shelves under the desk into the deep. So here I have sketchbooks to use and notebooks to use, empty sketchbooks and empty notebooks to one day use and then right at the bottom just some paper and card and stuff. And then on top of my desk I always have the sketchbooks that I'm using right now. So right now I'm using my mustery sketchbook for nice drawings, this Ryman one for sketches and then this XL one for like uh, mixed media stuff or bigger drawings. I always have my iPad on here to watch YouTube or sometimes even to use it. Always need a coffee and I normally always have a my pencil sharpener holder, my favourite eraser and my favourite sharpener close by along with my colour pencils which I just refreshed so these are all different colours that, that I've been using for my big pencil set and I always have my paint cup here with all my paint brushes in this cup I actually fixed myself I broke it and then I fixed it using like gold paint so I really like this one and then this one here is from Paper Chase it's a little cactus which I think is super cute and then moving on to the favourite part of my art supplies is the art trolley. So on top I have all the things I use the most. I've got some paper artsy paints here. My Copic markers, which I actually don't use. They're actually collecting dust right now. Um, and then I have this pot here, which is a whole bunch of different markers and stuff that I got from Scrawlerbox when I was doing Scrawlerbox. The Winsor and Newton Pro markers, which I really love. Some Posca pens. And then here I have a whole bunch of different coloured pens, all of my black pens, and then a whole bunch of different like pencils and stuff that doesn't really fit anywhere else, like my old Apple pencil that I don't want to give away because I love it. Memories. And then moving down, I've got my paints. So you're probably very familiar with seeing these. I've been using these all year. These are my acrylic gouache. I also have a collection of uh, tubes from different watercolour makers some proper gouache back there, Mod Podge and Gesso for when I'm in the mood for art journaling. And then moving down to my inks, so you can see back in the day I had quite an ink uh, obsession, I have a lot of inks, I'll go through those in a sec. And I have my uh, tissue paper here for when I'm painting, and then right on the bottom just stuff that's kind of like you don't really need all the time. So I have these just so they're easy to get to, the rest of my pencils and the Kuretake paint set there along with just some random cardboard and now let's see how I tidied up my drawers I gave them a good tidy up okay so this is my top drawer so I just have like some bigger bits to get to this is my little um, sprocket printer where I keep my camera some post-its and stuff kind of office supplies little bits and pieces that are hard to get to so I just keep the one-on-one -on -one area like my compass this is actually super handy little electric what's in a gullet and in here is just other stuff that's kind of helpful like to clean my glasses headphones hairbands things like that this is the drawer that gets the messiest the fastest in about a, a month it'll be up to the top of here with absolute junk again second drawer so this is where i keep all my extra art supplies extra paints a whole bunch of different pens pit pens line markers, regular black pens, I never know if I'm going to ever use those, someone gave them to me. And then the last drawer is like the equivalent of the junk drawer in the kitchen, so super glue, I've got my clay in this bag, uh, I've got some stamping stuff here, a whole bunch of like random things like drawing pins and stuff, staplers and all these pens that I got from Scrawlerbox that I probably won't use much. So that is my storage area, and now I'll show you some of my favourite art materials. So the first thing that we'll talk about is sketchbooks. And I go through a lot of different sketchbooks. A lot of different sketchbooks. So these are some of the sketchbooks that I still have to get through. A couple of recent ones that I have enjoyed are the mastery sketchbooks, but I don't think I'm going to get these again once I run out of paper, just because they're spiral bound and I, I'm just not a fan. But the paper quality is lovely on the mastery sketchbooks. This is a Ryman sketchbook from England, wouldn't recommend, it is quite nice for just sketching, but the paper quality is terrible. I think everyone is familiar with the Canon Mixed Media, and I think they actually have lovely paper quality. 
uh, some I've used gouache on mine, I've used watercolour, I've used pencil. So yeah, this is a pretty good one. Again with the spiral bound, so once this is finished I'll probably try and move back to a regular sketchbook. And I even have some sketchbooks that I made. I, I just found these randomly and I thought, where did these come from? And then I remembered, uh, these were practices for zines, just to see cut in and shapes and staple and stuff. So this is actually just copy paper, I probably won't use this for notebooks. But I thought it was pretty cute, if you want to make your own sketchbook, it's like super easy to do. And if you want to go a little bit more advanced, you can actually make a proper sketchbook. So this is one that I made almost, oh gosh, I don't even know, maybe two years ago now. And I was going to fill it up with my Barcelona. 2019 holidays, but I kind of stopped doing it. I want to get back into it though And I basically made this following a tutorial on YouTube from from sea lemon It's all different types of paper. I bound it myself. I cut out the cardboard and everything So I definitely want to finish this and this is the little sticker by bye bun, but yes, that is sketchbooks And then my next favorite thing are color pencils, I think so I treated myself to these Faber-Castell coloured pencils and I think they may have all... Yep, they've all come out. They, I organised these yesterday and they've all just come out, haven't they? But these are the 120 set and I've taken about half out and popped them into my, my pencil cup. I actually really want to get another cup so I can have all of my coloured pencils out and then maybe split them into like the warm colours and the, the cool the cool colours but right now this is what I'm using I absolutely love the polychromos pencils I don't really use them for colouring in or like kind of traditional I really like to use them for sketching if you think that's all the colour pencils I have you'll be wrong I have so many coloured pencils guys and I can't throw them away this bag of coloured pencils so many pencils that I just don't want to throw away once I've gotten from scroll box I got more pencils. So this is another pencil bag filled with pencils. So at one point I need to organise these and sort my life out, but until then I'll just hide them away in my drawer and pretend they don't exist. And after coloured pencils, probably the material that I use the most are paints. And I actually started my art journey with watercolour paints. This was the first watercolour set I ever brought myself. It's the Winsor & Newton watercolour set. And you can see I used it quite a lot. Just a little pan set there. And then I upgraded with this bad boy. So this is the Kuretake Ganzai Tambi watercolour set. And I love these watercolours. They are absolutely beautiful. You know what? I actually forgot I had them until I was cleaning up yesterday. And it's such a shame because... Aren't they gorgeous? They're so nice. If you've used these, you'll know, you'll know how nice they are to use. But I would love to get back into watercolour, although this year I did say I'm taking a break from watercolour because I really want to focus on acrylic gouache. But before I knew about acrylic gouache, I upgraded my watercolour pan sets to watercolour tubes. There's just something about them. I feel like so much more professional using a watercolour tube than a watercolour pan. So I got a whole bunch of uh, special ones, treated myself, got some for my birthday, and I've just been collecting them. So if you, any of you guys have watched any of my videos for the past six months, you'll know I'm obsessed with acrylic gouache. Yep, opera is the best colour. But also, look at all these beautiful colours that you can get. So in England, we have one store called Jackson Arts, and Jackson Arts is like literally the only place you can get acrylic gouache from at a reasonable price. You can probably get stuff off Amazon for like 18 pounds a tube or something. But if you know where to look, you can get these bad boys for about four pound. It's not too bad. And my favorite thing to do is pop the teeth together, colored pencils and acrylic gouache. They make a wonderful couple. So those are the art materials that I use the most right now. But let's look at past April, because she got up to some crazy stuff. So when I first started doing art a couple of years ago, I was a lot more experimental than I am now. And I think that's mainly because I didn't know what I wanted to do or what I liked. And now I've kind of like settled into what I know I like or what I want to improve on. But back in the day, man, I tried everything. And the first thing I actually got into was inks. So I picked up these and my obsession from inks kind of grew from there. And then the next set I got was for my birthday, which is this lovely set. I don't know why I'm showing it to you like this because you actually can't see it. It is the Dr. P.H. Martins and they come in a whole bunch of different colours. My absolute favourite colour is number three, which is persimmon. And it's like a lovely coral tangerine pink. It's kind of hard to explain, but it's lovely. 
and these are actually concentrated watercolors so i'm not sure if they're the same as inks i think they're pretty much inks they are very staining and they do not work like watercolors at all so uh be warned if you've never used them before and you think they're going to work like watercolors because they don't but they are lovely to use and i would definitely recommend trying inks if you've never done it in the past it's really fun and another really lovely set i actually wanted after watching by bun and it is the liquitex muted inks collection which I used for my Inktober uh, this year. No, it was last year. Um, they are muted, like like it says on the, on the box, so they're not as bright as the other inks, and they have lovely colours. So there's like this beautiful emerald green, and then like a grey, which is almost like a kind of a purple grey. So if you like things that are muted, you don't want to go so extreme and get like a super bright ink, I think these are really nice to start with. And then I am ashamed to admit I've never used these. <laughs> I brought them, I thought I was going to use them for Inktober, and I, I brought them, and I just, honestly, I haven't even used them. I think I swatched them. They are the Winsor & Newton inks. You can get different sets. I really love the packaging on them. They're really, um, like, old school, with, like, really cool vintage illustrations. But like I said, I've never used them. So I can't really comment on them, but they are inks. That's all I know. Back in the day, and when I say back in the day, I mean two years ago, I was actually really into using ink pens. So even though I've only been drawing for about two or three years, I've always loved line art. And to this day, I love line art. Line art. So it kind of made sense that I would start with pens. So I've got a whole bunch of different pens here. They're all basically the same, just different makes. I've got a few uh, black sets. I've got the Faber-Castell Pip Pens in grey, which are kind of like a felt tip. I actually don't use these much, but I got them again when Bai Bun mentioned them because I love Bai Bun. What I did love back in the day, and when I say back in the day, I mean two years ago, were these graphic line painters. And I have done quite a few little portraits with these. They are super fun if you can get your hands on them. Basically, it's kind of like paint pen. So there's paint in the pen and then you like smush it down on the page. You can use water with it. It kind of gives you like watercolor almost vibes. They're super bright and they're really fun to use. So if you guys love color, you love making a mess and you love messing around with new supplies, definitely check out these line painters because they're super fun. And then just to finish off, I thought I'd chuck in some like miscellaneous stuff that doesn't really fit into other categories, but stuff that I love using uh, quite a bit. Yes, it's a plate. Not just any plate though. I use it for my paint. You can probably tell, right? But I I did have, I do have a little flower palette and I just don't, they're too, they're too small. I like to have a nice big flat mixing thing. And this isn't actually as big as I'd like. I mean, it would be great to have a massive one. But anyway, that's just what I use. I think I found it at Sainsbury's for like 50p. Just use that, it's quite nice. Little paint palette. And one thing that I used to use a lot and I just found when I was cleaning a few weeks ago was this mechanical pencil. And I do have a few mechanical pencils, but I think this is my favorite one. Just because it's got a nice little grippy grip bit. It is the Pentel Graph Gear 1000 with seven millimeter leads. And the thing that I really love, if you guys have been watching me for a while, follow me on Instagram, you know that I really love drawing with colored pencils. So I got these Pilot Colour Eno LEDs so I can switch up my mechanical pencil and paint in different colours. So that's pretty fun. Speaking of weird coloured pencils, I also have this pencil that I picked up for a pound, I think a pound, in Paper Chase. And it is a dual, it's like four colours in one. So super old school, probably had one of these when you were a kid, I think everyone did. Really fun to sketch with actually. And with all that pencil sketching, you're gonna need an eraser. So this thing is okay. It's, uh, I actually prefer using just a regular old eraser, but if you wanna get into tight places or, you know, just like do little details, this little buzzy. And to finish it off, last thing on the list, not really an art supply, but it is my bullet journal. So I haven't, this year's the first year that I started doing bullet journaling and I haven't really used it the way lots of people do, make it really pretty and stuff. I've kind of just gotten into the habit of writing lots of lists. And I, I've enjoyed that because I'm a good list maker. I love making lists. 
and I've gotten into that kind of like a routine where I just do my very simple week schedule I do a month schedule and in between doesn't matter where it goes that's the best thing that's the best thing about bullet journaling you can just pop things wherever I can just do like a notes page so this is for my website this is for my art school video things that I want to do and just kind of like slots in anywhere so that is my bullet journaling it's definitely helped me stay organized and helped me stay motivated and with that said that is all of my art supplies my desk tour and everything that I love using on a daily basis I do have a like another half of my kind of art space that I like to use and that's my office so that's where I have my computer my printer my Cricut all of my stuff for my Etsy shop that I'm going to be opening soon but that is very disorganized right now because we have been working in there for the last two months working from home and hopefully we're going to have like a nice redo of it and just make it nice and productive and put like shelves up and stuff so hopefully in a few months I can do a little office tour too so I hope that you enjoyed the little desk tour and found some new art supplies that maybe you want to try and maybe you have a favourite material that I didn't mention on here that you thought it might be fun for me to try or other people. So let us know in the comments below what your favourite art material is. And I will see you on the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.